Hi there and welcome to this video on integration between the LDRA tool suite and MATLAB Simulink. There are a few different reasons why you might to integrate these two tools. So the first one is when you're performing software in the loop testing or processor in loop testing uh, within Simulink, you can use LDRA as the code coverage tool to collect code coverage during that process. On top of this, you can also use LDRA's verification tools on the auto-generated code. So this includes traceability to requirements. You can perform a static analysis on the auto-generated code. And if you perhaps maybe haven't got 100% code coverage from your model level tests during the, that SIL process, you might also want to generate lower level tests at the unit level to supplement that code coverage. In this video, we'll look at the first one. So we'll use LDRA as the code coverage tool during a SIL test. And then as a follow on video, I'll create a unit test to supplement that code coverage. So here we have our model all set up for software and loop testing. And what I've done here is I've gone to the verification tab in the code generation options and I've selected LDRA testbed as the third party tool for code coverage for SIL or PIL. And to configure this, all I needed to do was point it towards the directory where I have the LDRA tool suite installed. And if you have both tools installed, Simulink and LDRA, then that's all you need to perform the integration. Then when we run our test, the model will be rebuilt if there's any changes and then LDRA will be called under the hood to perform the instrumentation phase. And then during execution, we'll be collecting that code coverage data and generating a code coverage report at the end of that SIL test. So the simulation is complete here. I'll kill the data inspector. I'm not interested in the actual results. What I want to take a look at is the code generation report. So this is the classic Simulink code generation report with the code coverage annotations on top. And if you're like me, you might find this a little bit difficult to read. So we can then use the LDRA code coverage report instead to take a look at the coverage results. So this is tailored per industry for uh, safety criticality levels. And right now we're reporting on statement branch and MCDC coverage. And let's take a look at say counter type B here and figure out what's missing. So we can clearly see that there's some generated code that hasn't been executed during that cell test. So we've got a choice here. We could go back to the model level and generate more tests at the model level to try and uh, exercise this code or we could create some lower level unit tests on this code. And that's what I'll do in the next video using LDRA's TB run mission. In the last video, we ran a software in the loop test and used LDRA to obtain the code coverage information during that execution. In this video, what we'll do is we'll supplement those results by adding lower level unit tests with LDRA's TB run unit test tool to increase our code coverage. So this is the point that we left off from the last video where we ran a SIL test and we've generated a code coverage report. Most of the time using model level tests, you will be able to get large quantities of code coverage. However, there will typically be some gaps which are very, very difficult to touch and get coverage on with model level tests. In this case, you need a way of quickly generating lower level unit tests to supplement that coverage towards a goal of 100% statement coverage and branch coverage and MCDC coverage. And this is a common goal of many industrial software development process standards. So in order to do this, let's minimize MATLAB Simulink. And what we need to do is go to the LDRA launcher where we have the results, the existing results already inside the LDRA launcher. So all I need to do here is launch the TB run unit test tool. 
and we'll create a scenario for counter type B because this is where the missing coverage was from our model level tests. So let's create a new sequence here which is basically a test scenario. Let's call this counter type B and we'll select code coverage and we'll keep all the other settings as default. So here we can already see the code coverage data that we have. So let's take a look at the flow graph and understand this a little bit more. So this is the control flow within the procedure. And we can see that we've taken the false branch through this decision up here, but we haven't taken the true branch down here. So let's set up a test to execute. And I can see there's some functionality here that I might want to test. So here we have during a reset state, this global variable gets set back to zero. So we want to take to create a test which checks that functionality, checks that that is the case. So let's kill the flow graph here and create our first test case. And the first test case is probably sensible to call the init, the initialization procedure for the counter. And I'll just execute this test case and this will report back what value has been uh, initialized in the so here we've got a global value of 15 I'm not exactly sure what that means but I can be confident that this counter is now initialized so let's create a new test case for counter type B and we can see there's some global variables here so RTY count B is an input and an output global and there's some other input variables that I can stimulate. I can I can give values to this procedure. So first one, enable B. This is the one that's actually forcing that, that decision. So I'll make this true. RTU reset. Again, let's take a look at the flow graph. So we need to make sure RTU reset is true as well. RTU ticks to count. I'm not really fussed about this variable. It's not um, important for this test. So I can set that as to, to retained. So this will be just whatever the global variable is uh, initialized to through the first test case. And the same with RTY count B. I'm not really too fussed in forcing the, va the value of that global. I just want to check the output. So in this case, RTY count B is the output that we're checking. We want to check it is equal to zero uh, once this test case is called with these inputs. So I'm going to put three here just to check that the uh, harness will report a, a, a fail on this value. So let's run this test case now. And indeed we have a fail. We have an expected value is different to our actual value. So we can be sure that actually, yep, the, the, the procedure is returned zero with this set of inputs on the reset state. So I'm going to store a zero for regression purposes. So when I rerun that test and on the regression report, we'll get a pass. So importantly, I, I need to add some documentation here. But then I can take a look at the flow graph and check if I've increased my coverage which indeed I have. I've got some more green there. So notice that the flow graph is already adding up all of the coverage from the model level and the unit test level already. If we just wanted to have a look at the existing run, then we could change to the current run, in which case we get the red down here, which means this is the only path that we've taken through this test scenario. So let's meet this branch here, just for the sake of a full test suite. So Let's create a, a new test case and we'll just call this a test case for coverage. We'll not actually check any functional outputs. We'll just make sure that there's no nasties in there, no runtime errors with the given set of inputs. So RTU reset, we need to make false. I'm going to zero. I'm not fussed about this output at all. I'll just suspend this for now to indicate that I'm not actually checking any value. I don't want that value if the model, if the code changes or something like that, I don't want this test case to fail based on a value that I'm not interested in, in actually checking. So we'll just keep that suspended. So we get a pass, which means that the test case is successfully executed here. And also on our current coverage run, 
we're now getting towards 100% statement coverage which is great and also our branch decision coverage has increased as well. Notice on the combined coverage run we're getting 100% statement coverage, 100% branch coverage. So now when I generate my code coverage report here, we still have a fail, but it's looking slightly better. So we have run one, which came from the SIL test from MATLAB, and then we have full runs. So that's each time I, I pushed a run inside TB run, it's accumulated the coverage for those. Thank you for watching. If you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to get in touch via these channels.